Hey everybody, I hope you're all doing well and are safe and healthy. And that said, we're gonna do something very special today. We're gonna to do a Blender video, and not just a Blender video, a Blender video as an introduction for people transitioning from Maya to Blender. Okay, everybody, well, welcome to the channel and welcome to Blender. Now, for those of you who know my channel, you are probably surprised I'm doing a Blender video. Uh, I'm doing so because I received tons of requests from you guys to do that, right? Now, keep in mind that this doesn't mean that I'm moving away from Maya, not at all. Uh, Maya is my go-to. It has been for many, many years, uh, but I think it's always a good idea as a 3D artist to expand your skill set, right? So if you know how to work in 3ds Max and Blender and Maya and Cinema 4D, that will make you a better artist in my opinion, right? Okay, so this video will be an introduction to Blender, uh, specifically for Maya users. Now, if you're not a Maya user, you can still follow along. Uh, however, I will be uh, kind of comparing Blender with Maya, so uh, you need to take that into account, okay? All right, so this is basically your opening window. When you open a new scene, we're in uh, Blender 2.82a to be exact, and you can see that in the top right corner here in this menu. And in this menu, you have the option to kind of select what type of new file you wanna start, general, 2D animation, and so forth. We're not gonna use that, we're gonna click outside and just get rid of that menu. Now, because Blender is free, uh, I suggest you get the latest version, right? Okay, so now this is your default window when you open up Blender. We have a perspective view of a cube that is centered on a grid. And what we have going on here is a camera. We have a default light and we have an object on our grid and so forth. Yeah. Now, this is all represented in this top right panel right here. And they call it the scene collection in Blender. And it says camera, cube and light. Now, if you're a Maya user, you would probably call this your outliner, right? And then if I select my cube down here, you see uh, basically the specifics of the cube. So the location, the rotation, and so forth. In Maya, that would probably be your channel box or even your attribute editor, giving you details about you know the object selected. Okay, so that's that. Now, uh, now that we know that, and this is your perspective view, of course, and you can see that up here because it says perspective and that will change as we move forward. And that said, how do you move around here, okay? Now, uh, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna hold down the shift key and we're gonna middle mouse button, right? So hold on shift, push down the middle mouse button and that will allow you to pan around, right? If you only hold down the middle mouse button, you can rotate around the origin, right? And if you just use your scroll wheel, you can scroll in and out. Now that brings me to one of my favorite things in Maya that you can do here as well. In Maya, if I had a situation like this, I would hit F to frame the cube center screen, right? Here you can go up to uh, view and you can go to frame selected like that, or you can go and hit the point or period key on your numpad and do the same thing. Yeah, good, good. Now, uh, let's see, that's the basic moving around and so forth. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this little gizmo thing up here, right? So we've got that green and red and blue thing. Um, in Maya, that would be your, uh, I think it's called space cube or cube, not sure. Anyway, it kind of tells you what your orientation is. Now, this brings me to one of the biggest differences for me personally, and that is that in Blender, the up direction is Z or Z, which in Maya, of course, is Y. The y, the, the y direction in, um, in Blender is represented by this green line and the X in, is the red and up the blue is Z. Now, if you click on the gizmo here and I click on this red thing, it will jump. And you will see right here, it's now in the right orthographic view. I can click on green, it's the back view. I can click down here, bottom view and so forth. But if I click outside of these colored uh, circles, I can just freely drag it around and get towards any position I want, right? So I can basically get back to where I was. Let's zoom out a little bit and then there you go. 
Now, there are also shortcuts to do that. And these are on your numpad and they are one, three, and seven, just so you know, yeah? And again, I can click in here and free transform back to where I was. There you go. Okay, so now that we know how to uh, kind of move around and navigate around our object, what about manipulating our object itself? What about scaling it and moving it and so forth? Now, um, the cool thing about Blender is that the shortcuts that you use are very intuitive, which is kind of nice. Uh, of course, if you're coming from Maya, things are changing, it's, it can be difficult, but they're easy to remember though. Now, first of all, on the left-hand side, you have kind of a menu bar like you would have in Maya. And you can see here, we got the D move, we got the rotate, we got the skill and so forth. But we're gonna use shortcuts because that will make your workflow much, much faster. Okay, so how do you move an object? Well, that's pretty cool because you hit a G for grab, right? Now, we got a yellow selected line right now. If I hit G for grab, it turns white. And the only thing I have to do is move my mouse and the cube will follow along. Let's say this is the new position that I want, right? I just left click and now it's uh, orange or yellow again, yeah? So let's hit Control Z to go back. I would hit G, I would move it around, I would click and there you go. Cool, right? So G for grab. Now, uh, let's say I want to um, move it over one of the specific axes. So I'll just hit Control Z to go back. Now you see up here that we got our Y direction, we got our X direction and so forth. So what I would do is I would tap on G to move. I would tap on, let's say X, and I would select the X axis. So now if I move my mouse, it will only go over the X axis, right? Click to select, Control Z to go back. Let's try that with Y. So G to move, Y, there you go, and click. Control Z to go back. So G to grab and move, right? Hold down X, hold down Z, depending on the axis you want. Okay, what else? Let's say you want to rotate. Now, what would the shortcut be for rotate in uh, Blender? It will be the R for rotate, kind of neat. So if you hit R, you can do this and you can move it around. Now, let's say you want to be a little bit more specific about that. I'm just gonna click here, hit Control Z to go back. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna click on rotate. That will give you a similar situation like in Maya. You can rotate like this, you can rotate like that. And as you do so, you see the degrees changing here in your um, properties menu, yeah? You can choose the white one and so forth. We'll go back, control Z. And then finally, we have the skill command. And for skill, you click on S for skill, yeah? So there you go. This is uniform skill. Now, if we go back and we click on this guy for skill, we get a gizmo looking like the one in Maya. We can go and do this, we can do this, we can do this. And if we want to skill in a uniform way, we'll take the white circle and we'll do this, yeah? So a quick recap, G to grab. So select this guy, G to grab, move it around, yeah? You want to do S, the skill, you want to do R to rotate. Yeah? Okay, let's go back. All right, now that we have all that, let's see what else. Let's talk about our panels. Now, like I said, top right corner, um, the scene collection is basically the outliner in Maya. Down here, you have your uh, properties uh, or your channel box or attribute editor, as it's called in Maya. And here is your perspective view, and you can see that up here with. Um, the way the name is set up there, yeah? Now, let's say you wanna change the layout. How do you do that? Well, first of all, if you hover your mouse over the vertical or horizontal borders, you can see that you can slide them, right? So just go here and slide them and make them bigger and smaller and so forth. Now, what if you want to have multiple panels open, right? I got a perspective view here. What if I want to have a second perspective view? Now what I can do is go to the vertical border right here and when my cursor changes, I right click and go to split. I can split vertically or horizontally. Let's do horizontally, okay? I can move my mouse, where do I wanna split it? Let's say right here. And now suddenly I have two identical setups, right? But I'm gonna go to the top one, I'm gonna click here, select my object and I'm gonna zoom out. 
And as you can see, the one on the top is zooming out, the one on the bottom is not. And I can go in here, right, and I can, you know, pan it around and I can do all that kind of crazy stuff and this will not change. But what's cool is I can also change this into an entire different window, right? So right now it's user perspective. I can, for example, change it to a certain view like this, or I can even go in here and do something completely different. So like a sculpt mode menu or something like that, right? Okay, let's say I'm done with that. I don't want that anymore. I wanna get rid of it. How do I do that? You go back to that split line, right? You right click again, and then you click on join areas. Now, when I do that, it basically says, which one do you wanna get rid of? It has an arrow pointing down. And if I move my mouse up, it has an arrow pointing up. So if I click on this one, right, that's the one that will disappear. So I'll click and it's gone. There you go. All right, so that's how that works. Uh, let's see, uh, what else do we have? And like I said, this is not gonna be a cover all video. This is just to get you guys started. Uh, what I want to show you guys is basically how to add a new object. Uh, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can go in here, you can click on add, you can go to mesh, and then you can go to, uh, I don't know, create a new circle or create a new cylinder, and I can do that. And it's creating it right there because that's where my origin is. If I want to change that, I got this guy right here, this cursor, yeah? So it's right there. If I move it over here, for example, and I go up to add mesh and uh, cylinder, it will be created right there, yeah? So if you go in here and then I move it over here and I do that again, add uh, mesh and let's do comb, there you go, yeah? Okay, so that's that. And then finally, one thing that I think is extremely cool, and I wish they had that in Maya. Uh, have a look at the bottom of the screen right here. It has a menu here. It says change frame, box select, pan view, and all that, right? It shows the symbol of a mouse with the left button pushed in, the left button with the little thingy next to it, the middle button, and so forth. What that basically tells you is when you're in this certain, when you're in this view, it tells you what you can do by clicking on certain mouse positions. So right now this cube is selected and at the bottom of the screen it says, if I click my right mouse button, I will have the object context menu. Let's see if that's true. There you go. It says if I, um, uh, I don't know, if I, um, if I click on my middle button, I can rotate. There you go. Okay. So basically this is to get you guys started in Blender. Uh, you now know how to set up windows, how to move them around, how to scale them, how to change them. You know how to scale, rotate, um, uh, and so forth. You know what your windows are for. Um, and I think that will be enough for you guys to get started, right? So let me know in the comments if you want me to do more Blender videos. Let me also know if you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. That would help me out so much. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, please subscribe to the channel, right? Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.